guys. So today we're building a third Drift One go kart chassis. All right, and the reason I'm calling it the Drift One chassis is because it's built for a little bit of street, a little bit of gravel, and a little bit of you know mild rally, you know mountain, you know rigging. Let's say, okay. Uh, my first one I did it was out of 120 wall. I expected it to be a little too heavy, but I didn't know what I was building at the time. So all these other ones are thinner uh, because me and that one has been been beyond proven. We're gonna go a little bit lighter uh, in materials and start playing around with our configurations, finding that happy medium. So that way we can get you the best product, but also keep the uh, materials and cost down. You know, so it's a win-win for both of us. Okay. That being said, our initial chassis that we built uh, was 120 wall, okay? This one is 095 wall through and through, and our third one over there on the bench is 095 wall, or no, it's uh, 120 wall mainframe and then 065 for the outers and cross braces, okay? So we have kind of a little bit of, you know, a difference in the chassis build, so that way we can see what works and what doesn't and what breaks and what doesn't. So that being said, I'm gonna show you uh, our chassis. It is fairly simple, but that's what we want because that way it is more universal for you guys and strong. I mean, that's what we want, you know? Something to last so you get your money's worth. So I'm gonna show you this. All right, so you can see our frame. Fairly unique, simple design, okay? For the main frame layout, okay? Each one is spaced directly for a certain object, okay? Uh, that way the placement is you know best for each individual okay go karts can only be so good because it's obviously not a vehicle you know you don't have a nice adjustable seat and yada yada but the luxury comforts of a normal vehicle that being said this is our three-piece frame made out of three sixteenths okay I've seen lots of people like to uh, you know keep their carts clean and such so this hole and this hole, front and back, are perfectly in line with the drain ports. And so some people like to thread in a hose and then we'll run the hose down and through and it'll drain right out right there. Uh, nice, easy, and then it keeps your project nice and clean. All right. That being said, our motor plate is right in here, okay? Depending on when you buy and how you buy your frame kit, okay? Standard will be six and a half inches from the back rail or six and a quarter inches from the back rail uh, over back left rail. Sorry, let me say that again. So the back plate, normal factory, if you were to buy a kit from us, it is going to be six and a quarter inches from this back rail on the back left side, okay? So that means from inside to the uh, face of this plate is six and a quarter inches and that will give you plenty of room and make sure you don't have a lot of deflection in this axle as you're torquing on it, okay? Because that bearing's a lot closer. That being said, we also located our uh, pillow block bearings right on the outside of the frame, uh, giving us uh, a happy medium of ground clearance so we can have lower ground clearance, but at the same time, a decent amount of ground clearance so you do have a little bit of flex, you know, when you're going half, or, you know, kind of off-road. Uh, our pillow blocks are about, oh, I can't remember some of the measures, six and a half inches from the end of the shaft. I figured that out there. I figured that to be about the unhappy medium when you don't consistently bend shafts and you can beat on it pretty well. This is a little bit longer axle shaft than what I have in my uh, go-kart, but we're going to try it out and see how the hubs handle it. Uh, I want to say this one's only one inch longer than mine on both sides, so two inches total overall, uh, but uh, it should work fairly well. Uh, we haven't had no bent uh, axles yet besides uh, normal from factory, you know, cheap axle shafts. Uh, this frame is all out of 095, okay, bent on a rope fab tubing bender. We have very little deformation in these 90 degree bends and these uh, other 10 degree bends. Okay. Like I said, this chassis is very simple. We're not going to hide anything from you, but we're just going to give you a solid product that you can trust and almost guaranteed to work okay. you know, for what you're looking for. Uh, that being said, our 
back plates. I'll bring you in over here and I'll show you. So our back plates on our version 1.0, the white and black go-kart, okay? Drift one, as we call it. Uh, this plate has not deflected at all. So what we mean is this is still true with the table. If you were to lay it on the table, it has not deflected up, being that the axle has taken a beating and slowly pushed the brackets up. But we thought this was a very good idea, so we added in these extra tabs, give it that long-term strength, and you'll never have to worry about these tabs ever moving uh, to, you know, for your application. Uh, it also gives it a nice extra you know, strong look and instead of just a plain you know, flat plate. Our C's, they're 3 16 C's with a gusset. This is the wrong side. But with a gusset on the top side, okay? This will keep the top side from ever bending, which will keep that bottom side from ever bending as well because you have that spindle in between it, all right? Uh, that being said, we've never had a problem with this. We just wanted to add it so nobody would ever have a problem, you know, throughout the years to come because we want to build something to last, like I said. The only thing I've been trying to debate on, which you can let me know in the comments, okay, is, our standard spindle, okay, this is the knuckle, this is the spindle that would be out here that holds the tire. Uh, our standard spindle, it has about, I want to say it was 42 or 45 degrees of steering throw, and we have a positive Ackerman, if I am remembering correctly. Okay, so what that means is it drives pretty darn good on road, and it has a pretty good throw for uh, drifting. In a couple of videos, which I'll show later, uh, you can see me drifting on gravel, and it throws hard, and it returns even harder. This, the version one that I was on, has a friction uh, disc brake, so they're not very good, instead of like the hydraulic hand brakes, where it can really lock it up and let it go, okay? Uh, if I had that, uh, basically that brake would be, if you, it's as they call it, the OSH uh, handle, okay, well... If you grab it because you went too far in the drift, it'll correct you and then you can at least, you know, get it back. But so far, these are very good carts. I'm honestly beyond impressed and that's why I want to just bring them to you guys because I, I am really hard on things and to give you something that I can actually beat on and not have to worry about, you know, like a friend breaking it besides the normal, let's say exhaust, gas tanks, or throttle cable, you know, because somebody jammed on it or it, you know, broke over time. Those little things to care less about, okay? But the rest of the go-kart, you don't want that to break. I mean, this thing should be holding up for time, you know, beating after beating, okay? But that being said, you're going to see me put the rest of this thing together slowly, and I'm going to show you the other one, uh, so that way you have an idea of what caliber we're kind of building. We don't have no plastic parts, uh in our carts everything is metal uh for industrial hardcore strength and that way you get the best bang for your buck you know okay this is our same drift one chassis this is just more finished out okay i personally like the extended sides this will be standard on all of our carts but we are planning to go with a half inch square tube for the bottom and top rail giving you that double wall look so you can have a custom panel with whatever you want on it, dimple thighs, your name, whatever you want, okay? Uh, that being said, gives you also added protection out here, so as you're drifting, you don't get a finger pinched because your buddy, you know, whacked you, okay? Uh, also gives us a nice building platform so we can put our handbrake, our gas tank, and other little accessories that you may want in the future. Uh, oil catch can, whatever you are thinking of, okay? Uh, this one has 065 wall tubing sides, and I was kind of thinking of actually cutting these off and putting on the half inch walls. That way we can just get it right off the bat, you know, going and uh, really see what this thing can do. But this part already is over half the amount of weight of the version 1.0 part, okay? Our carts are all made of steel, okay? Grade eight bolts, okay? Grade eight bolts, 
they aren't, you know, matching because our hardware store is, you know, not like that. But nylock nuts, nylock nuts on the bottom. Uh, greasable, greasable down here as well. We have good throw, okay? It is a little, you know, stiff because there's no grease in it right now. This is rough. Uh, the nice thing is, is most other companies have a plastic joint right here where we have a solid metal steering column, okay? Y'all, you're worried about this not uh, coming out. Well, you pull this bolt out, you slide it up. You gotta remove this greaser, slide it up, tilt this joint up, and you can pull it out and service this, service this whole steering column if it gets stuck or whatever. Why did I say it gets stuck? Because our steering column is also extendable. So that way you are happy on where the steering wheel is for your ride and you get a little bit more comfortability and adjustability out of your ride, okay? That being said, it's a, or it's a tight fit. There will be a set 3 8 bolt right here. Uh, that way you can tighten it down and get it tight. Uh, sometimes they do come loose, but I'd rather it come loose than seize up personally. Uh, you can do a little bit of Loctite, you can do whatever you want, but I let them stay loose and then uh, put a little bit of compound on them, honestly. That way it does kind of, it's a little more stiff. Uh, yeah, your brain would say put a nylock here, but you can't because it has to be a welded nut. Okay, it can be a crimped nut, but sometimes those crimped nuts take a poop and don't work. So I prefer it just to be loose and then once you get it set and jammed, it pretty well stays and I haven't had a problem. But you can see our setup here. This very nice steering column mount, okay. Our adjustable steering shaft works really good, okay. And that's basically what we got going. So, what do you guys think about our Drift One go kart chassis? What could we change that would make you more intrigued? What is something that you would want us to see maybe change to uh, be better that I'm not seeing, okay? Uh, let me know in the comments what color you would want one, what color uh, you want the secondary color to be, how much it should be, you know, price point. So far in my uh, quick calculations, about thirteen to fourteen hundred dollars in raw material parts for a fully complete go kart. Okay, that's not counting my time and materials into building the frame. Okay, so let me know what you'd pay. I was thinking definitely beating a couple of companies' prices. I think I'm not. I don't know if I'm really into making money. I would more want to see some smiles on some faces. And, Get some quality products out there for a good price price if you know what i mean but uh let's check these out i wish i brought the other one but as you can see that's our frame pretty sweet well you guys just let me know i'd love to hear your comments and concerns about our little chassis that we got going on Version one seems to be doing pretty darn good. We're just making it lighter, nicer, and a little more beefier in a way. But shoot me a comment down below. I'd love to hear your opinion. So we got our top main tube bent, okay? We're gonna get this squared up because I can already tell it's not fully square. But this is basically what I like for the main look of the Drift One chassis personally. This one kind of looks a little more sporty for some reason, but this one's not too bad, it's terrible. But this one also is a little high, so I think that's what's giving it that illusion. Drop it down a little bit. A little, or not as sporty. So yeah, yeah it still needs to go down a little bit. So as we go down with it and we get it squared up, you know, with the frame and such, uh, it should look fairly good. Yeah, it's, we've been a lot more.